tell folks how you got into the speaking profession. Okay. Now, now I'm hearing the sound of music. Let's start at the very beginning. A very, okay, very so good I'm place here. to start. Yeah, you yeah. And, I, we, and we and Chuck and I always sing together. I mean, we yeah. not might not. Chuck's you're a good singer too. No, bless you, bless your heart, dear. All right, oh, so look, Jane, yes. let's make this really simple to to start okay. the process. Uh, started in college as a music major, voice major. They said teach. I said, perform, teach, perform, teach, perform. Apparently I had no talent. So I went into accounting. Uh -uh. No, no, you, you missed that whole part for me. You were a voice. A I was a voice major in college. I started as a voice major in college. Did you go to Furman? No, I did not. I went to Appalachian State University, otherwise oh. known as UNC at Tweetsie. Okay. <laughs> now that we have that settled. Okay. So I went into accounting because I didn't want to be a poor, starving musician. Okay. Uh, got out and uh, eventually became a CPA. It took a long time to pass that test, but nonetheless, eventually became a CPA. And I found out something that I didn't really completely connect the dots with, but that was, I was good at speaking. I was good at communicating. I was good at bringing in clients, probably sucked as a CPA because whether it balanced or not, didn't really mean a whole lot to me just to be candid. Right. Um, but in, 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 in total honesty, back in the late eighties, I was overextended and underfunded. I had too much debt. Okay. And, and so I was, as us Southern folks would say, robbing Peter to pay Paul and, and, uh, my local banker who used to send us lots of business calls one day and he says, you're two months behind in your house payment. Is there a problem? And the truth was I was two months behind in my house payment. And of course I, kind of threw him off base a little bit and said, are you sure that payment hasn't been misapplied? And I don't think so, but, and I got off the phone. And at that point, Jane, it was like, oh my gosh, I have got, I have got to figure out quickly, how do I get the money to be able to pay the house payment so that he never knows? Right. And I stole the money. Not proud of it. Let me be crystal clear. Dumb thing to do. But I stole the money, called it borrowing, and paid the house payment and three months later paid it back. Okay. Well, good. Yay. But I did it again. And, and I paid it back. And it's kind of like speeding. You know, you get in your car, you need to go from point A to point B, like you've got to go to a funeral, right? You got to go from point A to point B. Maybe the traffic's a little heavy, whatever it happens to be. You're going to speed and you're probably going to assume in your head, well, yeah, but as long as it's, you know, less than 10 miles over, I'm probably not going to get a ticket. And if you don't get a ticket, there's a good chance you'll do it again. And if you do it enough, it just becomes a pattern. So, yeah. ladies, the pattern was Chuck created a Ponzi scheme. Didn't know what it was called. That's what it was called. But didn't know, just did it. Seemed intuitive. Thinking all the while, I'm, I'm going to earn more money and I'll, I'll eventually pay it back. Well, in 1990, the card was pulled from the House of Cards, so to speak. And all of that collapsed, which included my career, which included my license as a CPA. Uh, I was functionally became nothing more than a liar and a thief. Now. Here's the weird side to this story, okay? While I was a CPA, I taught continuing education courses to CPAs in 30 states. I would teach an eight-hour course on tax law. So I literally cut my teeth speaking, teaching tax law for eight hours. And I know you're sitting there. I can see by the look on your face, you're thinking to yourself, how titillating that must be to sit in a class for eight hours on tax law. <laughs> Just I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking how <laughs> difficult it is to listen to your very nice story with Chad who's tearing up my clothes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's good. This is really good. You're you're struggling <laughs> with the cat <laughs> and the microphone that he's been trying to you know put his head on. But well, yeah, I, of course. Chuck, you know, I'll have to digress and uh, interrupt because it's hard for me to see you in this role. But I know what happened. You know, because yep. you're just about the most honest, nice, giving, philanthropic person I've ever met, and for, even to fathom that you got caught up in this trap. And listen, 
you know, you are, are one of many and definitely people do. It's like the frog in the water type thing. You don't realize that yep. until that day it starts to boil and yep. I'm sure it, it boiled. So go oh, ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's, that's quite all right. Um, I'm going to make it again, fairly short. I, I went to the people I stole money from and, and said, do you want me in prison or pay you back with interest? And they didn't like me, but they said, pay me back. And with the help of family and friends, I did. Uh, the local district attorney, by that point, lost your license, lost the interest in the partnership, sold your house, sold all your assets, paid everybody back. There's just no more blood in this turnip to squeeze. I, I don't want to prosecute. But the federal government did because I had too much national notoriety. I testified before Congress on the House Ways right. and Means Committee on tax law. So it was like, OK, no, 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 no. Too, too much national wow. notoriety. So. Uh, I ended up pleading guilty to um, uh, embezzlement and tax evasion. Uh, tax right. evasion is for failing to pay tax on stolen money, which mm -hmm. quite frankly never quite crossed my mind. I mean, I just wouldn't think of putting that on tax return anyway. Right. <laughs> um, the penalty for that was on October 2nd, 1995, I took 23 steps into federal prison. It became 11-642-058. That was my inmate account number and, and spent my time there. And wow. Jane, let me say, uh, prison sucked. Pardon the way I put it, but, you know, there's probably yeah. other ways to put it, but it sucked. But yeah. I will also say probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Right. Yeah. Um, I learned more there than I would have ever learned outside, not only about other people, but about myself. Yeah. Now. Makes sense. You know, getting out, it was like, well, what are you going to do? Mom always said death and taxes, totally screwed up taxes. So I figured the only job I could get was selling cemetery property door to door. So I was your cemetery property salesperson, you know, knock on the her long door. Hey, you know, at some point in time, you're going to have to have a place to be laid to rest. Would you like to talk with me? And most people would say no, but occasionally someone would say yes. And in the South, if they invited you in and offered you sweet tea, it was on. <laughs> so and, and if anybody would know that, you would know that. I do know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Firefly tea is pretty good, too, when stuff gets rough and done rock and roll quite well. <laughs> Add a little <laughs> spirit to it. <laughs> um, so how long did you serve? Well, I was active for 18 months. I had three years probation. And um, when I got out, I was selling cemetery property. I was good at it. Uh I got promoted to being a manager at a location in Raleigh, North Carolina. We became a top performing location. They asked, could I do more? And I said, yes. And a decade later, I was a senior VP of sales and marketing in a public company. And wow. I'll never forget the question. Somebody said, well, how can you be a senior VP in a public company and a convicted felon? And yeah. I just off the cuff said, every choice has a consequence. Made dumb choices in the 80s, put me into federal prison in the 90s. Made better choices in the 90s, made me a senior VP in the mid-2000s. And they said, you ought to speak on that. And yeah. that started my speaking career as you know it today. <laughs>